Uh, hi, I'm Sovamir Sabutka, uh, and I'm going to talk about two things. Uh, first topic will be uh, basic techniques of uh, domain-driven design modeling, and second topic uh, will be ports and adapters architecture, uh, according to the um, language topic from the last presentation, as you can hear, uh, English is not the language of my mother, so uh, I try to use uh, very simple uh, syntax and uh, simple tenses uh, to uh, make it easier for you. Uh, so let's start with short introduction. Uh, a, little, a, a little bit of history. My first name is a concatenation of two words from ancient language of, uh, of Slavonic people. In Polish it's Słowianie. Słowo, mir, means someone who cherishes peace. So I'm a peaceful guy, and my last name uh, in this ancient language means uh, Sabbat, something like Black Sabbath. It was a holiday uh, when people celebrated the shortest night, night in the year, uh, in June. Uh, so that's enough about me. Uh, have you ever been in this kind of situation? We have a meeting of IT guys and business guys. <laughs> and <laughs> business people uh, want to introduce just a minor change. They need just uh, one little tiny checkbox on the screen. Minor change. And actually, it's a complete disaster. <laughs> Total Armageddon for you from the technical perspective. <laughs> Have you ever been in this, this kind of situation? Yes, yes. Strange, you have the best language. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you are professional. So you <laughs> estimate and you present your over optimistic estimation. 100 uh, Mondays, story points, whatever you use. Doesn't matter. And what's the reaction of business people? Too long. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why business people cannot understand the signif significance of the problem, of the change? Maybe the mental model of the uh, problem in your head and in business people's head is completely different. Uh, have you ever tried to use a uh, technical depth metaphor? Yeah. Uh, you should read, read about it uh, in the books, uh, in uh, agile conferences. Use technical depth metaphor because business people understand uh, money. Have you ever tried it? Who tried? Any success stories? Yeah. <laughs> what technical depth? It works. What are you talking about? Why? Because maybe, maybe, business people have different mental model of the current health of the um, system. So, in result, <laughs> okay, you go to work on, on the weekend again, just to fix it. Uh, so, in my career, I worked on uh, many different types of systems, uh, uh, libraries, frameworks, embedded system, but most of my time I spent in a business uh, software as a developer, as an architect, as a team leader, and now I'm um, trying to help uh, teams as an uh, outer observer, outer coach. I, I see many situations when IT people meet business people and I can observe the same patterns, of, patterns over and over again. Actually, I assume uh, that most of you create um, business software, tools that support some business cases. Yes? yes. Okay. So, you know, uh, business software is not a rocket science. Really, oh. it's not a rocket science. The only problem <laughs> is to understand the business problem and write it. You don't need uh, sexy languages. I, I work in Java, it's enough. <laughs> it's really enough. 
The only problem is to understand what's going on. Uh, that's why uh, I started looking for a solution for this problem. About six years ago, I started interesting about, uh, about uh, domain-driven design. And in my opinion, right now, it's the only uh, complete and coherent uh, set of techniques, uh, complete approach to deal with uh, business, business problems. Because DDD is aimed only to the business software. Uh, so in my opinion, it's, uh, you have no, no other choice when using DDD. How many people uh, met DDD techniques? Okay, how many people use DDD? Why? Why? I just go. Okay. So what is DDD? Let's reverse grammatics. So we are. We'll talk about uh, design. So our goal will be to model business problem, uh, not just uh, vision, not just nouns. Have you ever seen uh, entity relationship diagrams? Sad diagrams. Only data structures. How to, how to figure out what's going on in the business. It's not a model. Data, database schema, it's not a model. And in DDD, our model will be implemented one-to-one -to, -one to the source code. No abstraction, destruction, no high-level, low-level uh, models. One-to-one uh, -one implementation in the source code. Driven. What drives your design? Have you ever thought about it? Sometimes is user interface driven. Have you ever seen uh, uh, analysis documents that presents uh, screens flow? It's just a flow. Flow can change. When I built uh, um, Android version of my system, flow is different. What's going on under the hood in the business? Uh, driven. We invest the best people uh, to some part of, of our system where we uh, invest in DDD uh, because maybe, maybe this part of the system will, will be our co competi competitive advantage. And the domain, what is domain? is uh, sphere of knowledge, of business knowledge. Uh, and in DDD we have something what is called knowledge crunching. It's iterative process of uh, going deeper and deeper with our understanding of the problem. You cannot understand a uh, non-trivial problem in one shot, like in, like in waterfall. That's obvious. So we, we, we iter iteratively uh, gather knowledge. Uh, and we focus on core domain, because in DDD we separate problem in core domain. It's, uh, it's usually, usually about 5% 5 5 of the source, source code. Core, pr core problem uh, That's the reason why we create system. When we have supporting domain, some boring stuff you need to do in order to the whole system to have value, and some uh, generic domain or some, uh, some uh, already solved problems like, for example, invoicing. You won't, you won't implement invoicing over and over again in your system. Uh, and uh, we assume that, we assume that um, core domain is main source of the complexity of our system. So according to the complexity theory, we have two kinds of complexity. Uh, do you know complexity theory? Uh, okay, so we have essential complexity. Essential complexity is uh, nature of the problem. It's unavoidable. You cannot reduce essential complexity. We have to deal with it somehow. Uh, and we have accidental complexity, which is inherited from uh, your approach to the solution. And nothing can stop you. You can expand it, whatever you want. So in DDD, we are going to manage essential complexity because I assume, I assume that uh, you don't create CRUD operations. Uh, uh, your clients won't pay you a lot for doing CRUD stuff. So I, I assume we are dealing with more complex problems. So we are going to manage essential complexity and avoid accidental complexity. So that's, that's the main target of DDD. Okay. So uh, DDD is all about the model. Let's look at this sample model of some garage, I think. Uh, so model in DDD is product of the conversation of 
two roles. We have domain expert from the business side, people who know what's going on in the business. A domain expert, you can recognize him, for example, when there is a problem in the business, uh, on the business side, all business people go to the domain expert and ask him what to do because he has deeper knowledge. So that's the, the best choice to, to choose your expert. And from the IT uh, side, you have a modeler. Modeler is someone who creates the model. And modeler should be hands-on developer because model should be implemented one-to-one -to, -one to the source code. So we have two sides. And model is product of a conversation between two uh, or group of people. So uh, it's just in time, on place, process of creating model, not uh, 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 unaffected processes where business people write Word documents, Excel documents, half year, then send it to the IT, IT cannot understand it. I see all these this sad stories over and over again. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so we meet on the uh, modeling session and we create part of the model. In DDD, we have a process for um, uh, facilitating this, this uh, modeling session. It's called Modeling Whirlpool. I won't touch th this topic uh, because we don't have time. But in general, you, you, can, you can read about Modeling Whirlpool, iterative process of creating model. So uh, domain expert shares his knowledge to the modeler, and modeler creates a model and presents this model to the domain expert and ask, is that what you mean? Yeah, and domain expert can say, yeah, that's what I meant. But here, no, 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 it's, it's, it's completely different. But what is the most exciting part of DDD, knowledge also flows from the model to the domain expert. Business people can also learn about their uh, business. Uh, another uh, story, is, uh, for example, business works right now using uh, telephones and they order uh, software to help to expand their, their business. And uh, new URL, when you introduce your software, when you, develop, when you deploy it, it changes the reality of the business. So business needs to learn how to deal in a new environment with the IT tools. So that, that's the very typical process when a business learns from you, from model. Uh, third third uh, point of uh, Agile Manifesto, productive col collaboration. Yeah. You help a business. Okay, uh, and imagine uh, you point right here and you say, I would like to put um, a landing pad for, for a helicopter right here. Even non-technical people know it doesn't make much sense or they understand that it will cost a lot. Uh, because we need to restructure everything and maybe use uh, secret uh, materials from the NASA or something. If we, if we have common understanding of the problem, common model, then we, we can understand technical depth. How to explain technical depth to non-technical people? On the model. So model is a common uh, sphere of, uh, uh, of understanding of the problem. Okay, so in DDD, we uh, split logic because we all create uh, layered applications. Yeah? Presentation layer, logic layer, infrastructure, data layer, whatever, whatever you call it. But in DDD, we split logic layer into two layers, uh, application logic layer and domain logic layer. Application logic layer knows uh, this, uh, what scenario is, knows what to do, and domain layer knows how to do it. So let's look at this sample of this sample uh, model. Uh, so, okay, we have uh, some order. We can order products. Then we invoice this order. We create invoice. Uh, simple model, yes? 
so first technique, when you present uh, UML diagrams to the business people, it's not a good idea. <coughs> because maybe they have a traumatic uh, experience with UML. So don't, don't use UML. But you could use other uh, graphic metaphor. Uh, for example, order has lines. I know in UML you don't have this notation, but who cares? And line has a number, product, you order the product, some, some quantity, maybe catalog price and effective price after discount. Can business people understand this model? Should. Of course, you can try to use arrows, yeah, asterisk, and so on. M won't work. OK. Uh, so let's. Uh, very, very simple technique, but very, very effective. Especially when we deal with people with traumatic experience of UML. <laughs> So let's go deeper. Uh, exa ex examples uh, will be in Java. You know, we all know how to read Java, okay? I guess <laughs> from a school. So, create uh, when you create a model in DDD, you use standard building blocks. I will show you just five of twelve building blocks. Uh, mm, the basic building blocks block is aggregate. Aggregate is a graph of object, hermetic graph of, of, of objects. So our sample aggregate is order. Uh, the first thing, the first thing you think about it is behavior, not inner structure. Inner structure is minor uh, in DDD, but behavior. So let's model behavior. Your domain expert can uh, tell you this sentence. I add product to the order. Specif specifying given quantity. I add product to the order. Okay. Add product. It's a technical detail of this aggregate uh, that you, you need to use uh, order line inside. Order lines is just implementation detail. When uh, creating boundary of the ag aggregate, you focus on the invariance. Example, we have three objects, A, B, C, okay? And we have given invariant A plus B equals C, which means when you change A or B, you must change C. You cannot change C if E or B didn't change. So in our sample, uh, first invariant, you cannot have two lines in order to the, to the one, uh, to the same product. When you add already added product, you increase quantity on existing line. One invariant. Second invariant, every time you add product, you must recalculate total cost of the order. You could introduce another invariant. You cannot add product to order uh, which is finished, closed, submitted, whatever you call it. So we model invariants and protect them in coherent, coherent uh, aggregate. Uh, very basic, but, but very effective techniques or technique of uh, modeling uh, boundary of aggregate. Okay, let's leave this aggregate. But maybe, maybe creating complex aggregates is not so a uh, simple procedure, so that's why you use another building block, factory. Uh, so we can ask our uh, our uh, domain model, uh, what is needed to create an order? So, domain expert could, uh, could answer, uh, we need a client. So, okay, we have model. Create order using client. What constraints we put on the client? For example, client must be registered. Client must be over 18 years. Client uh, must live in some part of the world. Uh, client must have uh, credits because we have prepaid, uh, prepaid uh, model of, of purchasing. 
and so on and so on. So, so we model all these rules in, in, a, in a building block. Now we are going to create an invoice. That's why we created a bookkeeper to do it. Let's look at this model. Of course, uh, you can change your um, notation because business people are, are frightened with, uh, uh, with this syntax, so we can uh, skip um, um, brackets. brackets, yeah. You can skip brackets. So this model express a very basic rule. You invoice one single order. One order, okay? <coughs> what if, what if uh, requirements change and you need to uh, invoice few orders? Or maybe invoice just selected uh, items of the order? How to do it in this model? Oh, it's simple. We are smart. We could extend order class and create fake order class, which is an adapter and contains few orders on la or lines. Easy, yeah? But what would your mom and domain expert say? Don't, don't hack your model. Your model is wrong. It was okay in previous iteration of your previous understanding of the domain problem. Right now, you have more, more knowledge about the business. You should change your model. Don't hack model, change it. In other situation, you, we end up with a mess, as usual. Okay. Uh, but it was the first, first iteration. You could ask uh, business people, okay, what happened if I add product to the order, save order, wait one week, and submit order? What happened if price of the product change, or uh, if my uh, the rebate, the discount change. You ask domain expert about, about this problem and sometimes domain, domain expert can answer you, I don't know. We have never met this situation before. Because right now we are, we are working with telephones, not with uh, uh, stateful software. So, Business people can ask you what what you usually do about it, how to deal this problem. Okay, so maybe we can use another building block. So let's create a pricing plan. Pricing plan, which is a value object. Value object is just a value; you cannot change it. It's just an instant snapshot of your uh, of your state. Pricing plan would be a list with product. Uh, catalog cost, your, your discount effective cost from the given point of time when you call a function. In Java we don't have functions, but don't worry, we can call just method and think about function. Function just calculate snapshot of the state and return state, immutable state. Okay, so we create a value object pricing plan and we can send this pricing plan to the user, show him the pricing plan, and if user accept, accepts all prices, user can send you back this pricing plan with intention, okay, I've seen these prices and I accept it, I, can, I could buy it. Okay. So then, You could copy state of the pricing plan to the another aggregate called purchase. And purchase could be used as evidence in the court. For example, if you sell copyrights, I purchased with copyrights with uh, these prices on the given day. So that's the fact. And then we invoice purchase. So we totally changed our model. Instead of hacking it, instead of adding status fields, the order, and if you have status fields in your uh, object, you obviously have switch statement. I don't know in Ruby you have switch or, or something. Yeah. And you create a monster, a monster class. But it can't be a st state machine. Uh, just switches. Yeah, if, if, if state machine is a natural uh, model for this problem. Sometimes it is, it is natural model, okay. 
but if we are, de if we are dealing with a uh, more complex problem, we need a uh, next level of the structure. So in DDD, we can think about four levels of the model. Capability level, models, uh, general business resources, potential possibilities. And changes have low impact on this level. If you understand the very basic nature of the business, it won't change so often. As for example, we have a product, we have uh, money. Uh, how many people deal with money in the product, in, in your projects? Money, okay. Uh, do you have uh, money class in your standard library in Ruby? No? So what um, technical type do you use to model money? Float, okay. <laughs> Big integer. Uh, int, maybe, maybe integer is okay because you can uh, model seven, z seven uh, zeros as a, um, a fractional part. But uh, how much is two dollars plus three dollars? Five dollars. How much is five dollars multiplied by, by three dollars? Six square dollars, Bazinga. This operation has, uh, uh, makes no sense for money. That's why we create a money class that models this concept. It's, it's another value object. It's immutable, so we can safely return it from the aggregate. And it models uh, very specific operations, like multiplying, multiplying. How to compare to money objects? Maybe, maybe we accept some uh, delta. 5% delta for over $1 billion, it's okay. They are the same. It depends on the rules in the business. So we model these rules in the tiny objects. Uh, okay. But uh, sometimes our operations are model ge general, general business rules, but we need to tweak them a little bit. So in DDD, we introduce policy level. Uh, and another technique, uh, supple design. So uh, policy models, uh, goals, rules, law rules, maybe strategies, cons constraints. And in our example, we have a tax policy, which is kind of a closure to the invoicing procedure. Because general invoicing algor algorithm could be uh, the same in every country, but calculating tax could be different, okay? In Java, we don't have functions, so that's why we can use strategy design pattern <coughs> interface with polymorphic implementations. Uh, but strategy is really powerful because you can decorate strategies, uh, make chain, chains of strategies, and so on, so on. So, so uh, it's not so bad to use object-oriented language, but you can use function. What, the, what uh, is important from the DDD perspective, this model tells you a lot about how to calculate a tax, what is needed to calculate tax. For example, product type and, and net price. So you need to ask the main expert how to calculate tax in every country. Well, you, won't, you, you don't guess. So this tax policy is used as a, let's call it closure, to the invoicing procedure. Huh? Open close principle from solid. Open close implemented. Okay. Uh, some uh, in some domains. Uh, sorry, how much time do we have? Just run out. Run out, but uh, we have uh, forty-five minutes slot. Forty-five minutes. Okay, so fifteen minutes. Uh, in some domains. We, can, we could introduce a decision support uh, level of the model because maybe our system has some kind of intelligence, some kind of uh, analytical uh, decision support. For example, when you uh, order a product and product is not available anymore, system could suggest you an equivalent for it. Maybe your friends bought also this and this, so you could buy this instead of what you wanted. And it might be based on some intelligence. Okay, so we have model, model which models very basic 
uh, core rules of the business. And on the top of this, we model application scenarios. How many people use user stories? Okay, how many, how many people use use cases? Okay, and the rest of you? How do you know what to do? Okay, and what is better, use case or use a story? Excel. Sorry? Excel is the best. <laughs> uh, it depends who you're talking to. Some people are, uh, some people like examples. So use a story is great for when you talk to people, uh, um, example mindset. Uh, so for example, I'm buying this and this and this and I have this discount and I pay this. But some people, uh, have different mindset, more, more abstract, so use case is better for them. Oh, bo both techniques are good in software development. So our application logic can be, you can think, of, uh, think about it as uh, this metaphor of animator. Animator knows the story and uses ac domain actors to perform whole business. So we have sample steps, add product to the order. So we specify which product, which order, and the quantity. As you can see, domain does not, le does not leak above this layer. In this approach, I can, I can publish this service as a web service, a REST service, a remoting. Uh, I can call it from a web application, from your controller or presenter. In Rails, you have controllers or presenters, so... Controllers, okay. Uh, doesn't matter what the client is. You, you have just a service. And typical services are, uh, let's load aggregates from the repository. In Ruby, you use uh, active record pattern. Yeah? When I was young, it was considered uh, an anti-pattern. <laughs> but apparently things changed. I know. <laughs> it's a detail. It really doesn't matter. We, we need to avoid a technical onanism. It's not important. It won't help business people. Your, if you masturbate with technology, it won't help business people. Okay. Uh, more interesting scenario, we approve order. Which order? Uh, so we load, aggregate. S specification is another building block. I won't discuss it right now. So we check if order meets specification when we uh, submit this order and, as you remember, this method checks inner invariants. Maybe order cannot be submitted, exception. Then we use our invoicing procedure to create invoice. And application, look at this sample. Application decides what kind of tax is best for you. It's flow of the application, not the, dom not the domain rule. In this model, maybe in different businesses, this, mo this model won't be so nice. OK, so two layers of the model, model of the story, and model of the business rules. Now let's change topic to completely different uh, level. Let's talk about architecture. Word architecture, what does it mean? What does it mean for you, architecture? Sometimes it's just a noise people make. And this noise is used to uh, gain some extra reputation points. When you add this uh, word to the uh, title of the book, to the title of the presentation, you have extra 20 points of reputation. But in our, in our context, we use architecture as a general style. For example, every bottle has an architecture, vessel, and some uh, something to protect from leaking. And when you design concrete model of the bottle, you look at the general architecture and you choose shape, you choose uh, material and so on. So we use architecture as a general style. And uh, maybe you heard about hexagonal architecture. Anybody heard about hexagonal architecture? Okay. Uh, so that's the old name, because uh, people used to know six uh, ports. That's why they used a uh, visual metaphor 
of hexagon. Right now we know more parts, uh, so we don't call it a hexagon anymore, uh, but visual metaphor remained. Now we call it ports and adapters. So in this architecture we have a kernel that protects model. Uh, we have ports, uh, two kinds of ports. Visually we, we draw uh, offered port and the top and required ports on the bottom. So we offer interfaces for uh, oper uh, operating on our application. We can offer interfaces, interfaces for loading data and maybe the main model is not the best model to present it on the screen. It's not relevant when you draw, for example, grids in uh, jQuery. It's not efficient. So we, have, we can have the completely different model, read model and write model, business model. And these ports can be, uh, can be adapted to different environments. For example, we could call it from the web application, from uh, some kind of service, uh, from a listener in event-driven architecture. I will show this sample. Uh, command query separation uh, and maybe test. It may be test. And on the bottom we could uh, introduce outer uh, ports repository. It's alternative for uh, uh, active record because I don't care uh, what is uh, my data st storage. It could be database, it could be a web service or, or, what, or whatever. Uh, we could introduce uh, interfaces for some technical infrastructure. Maybe you use drivers for some um, uh, GPS stuff, uh, radio stuff and so on when you control, for example, buses in the city. And event publishing. Because in a distributed system we need to use events and we could uh, provide adapters to each port using, for example, uh, JMS as an events engine or test. So I can test my kernel if I call something, then I expect some events on the out. Okay, so we have one hexagon and things get more inter inter interested when we introduce another module. In DDD, we have concept of uh, bounded context. Bounded, bounded context uh, <coughs> if the context where uh, vocabulary, where a model makes sense. For example, in one context, product means something what you sell, what have a price. In other context, in a warehouse, product means something what you store uh, on the shelves and something what you need to pack in a very special uh, packing uh, packs. Yeah? In, in another context, uh, when you have, for example, uh, um, claims, product is it's something what can be broken and you need to fix it. So the word product sounds the same, but the meaning is completely different in the head of three different uh, domain experts. So that's why we create bounded context, context where model makes sense. Out, out, uh, uh, outside the context, these words have different meaning and, and maybe misleading meaning. Technically, we can think about separated modules of the system. We have modules and we to integrate modules. So let's look at this sample, sample case. We have client relationship management module, bounded context, also developed using this architecture. And we have a client aggregate. And our aggregate allows us to change status of the client. So we have some business logic and then we publish event. Client says, hey, my status has changed. If anybody is interested about it, do whatever you want. So I publish an event. And uh, I don't want my domain model to leak outside the context. That's why we create a snapshot. Value object that carries some information about client because I don't want client uh, class to be visible in our context. Okay, so we publish our event to the interface of the <coughs> event port. It is handled by some adapter, for example, JMS. Uh, and this event travels on the event bus. <coughs> and maybe event hits listener in the adapter of another hexagon. 
Okay, we have a listener. And this listen listener in general should be a, a so-called stupid code, glue code. It only calls your port, your, for example, discount service just to, uh, just to perform uh, discounting. But maybe this event can, uh, can be cut uh, by, another, by another bounded context, for example, Facebook integration, so you want to publish. I am the VIP in this system and so on. You could call this, uh, catch this event in, for example, warehouse module and send uh, some souvenir to the, to the client which just became a VIP in your system. Okay. So we don't have time to discuss classic stuff, but ports and adapters integrates all classic architectures our civilization now. Uh, Saga, let's skip it. Uh, testing. Okay. Uh, I assume that you know uh, testing pyramid metaphor. Yeah? Testing pyramid says we should have sorry uh, many unit test and. Uh, minor part of our end-to-end -end tests. Uh, but we could now uh, uh, think about general rule of the thumb that you should invest your unit test in the, in the kernel, in your domain objects. Why? Because, for example, to test your domain ob objects, order, invoice and bookkeeper, you need, for example, 300 tests. And you have 100% co test coverage. Okay? But if you try to achieve this coverage from the upper layers, you go into multiplication, one million possible cases, for example. Of course, you can say not all cases are possible. Yes? But which cases are possible? That's the hard question. So it's impossible to gain high coverage hitting from the top. So you need to focus on your core domain. and. The most complicated logic is located in the kernel, in the domain objects. Yes? So that's the place you should invest your time do, doing unit tests to, te to test perfection of your domain. But you can use end-to-end -end tests just to check meeting the general requirements. You cannot use them to test perfection. Okay. So let's summarize. Business software really is not a rocket science from the technical point of view. The only problem is to understand and have common understanding. And I cannot imagine any different tool, technique to share common understanding than creating common model. You create a model and you ask domain expert, is that what you meant? No. What should I change? to have common understanding. Okay, thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Any questions? Do you know any, rule, uh, any rules uh, to get uh, the better knowledge about your domain? So how to uh, get the knowledge about the domain? Uh, in DDD, we have uh, all, all set of techniques to uh, get this knowledge from, from, from the domain people. It's a whole topic for another few hours of presentation. Any books about it? Uh, yeah, Domain Driven Design by Eric Evans. Okay. It's 10 years uh, book, but it's still uh, it's universal. One more question? I'm interested in persistence uh, stuff. How do you manage persistence with the events? Uh, or do you make your domain logic uh, not aware of the persistence layer at all? Or do you handle it with the events? How, how do you do that? OK. So actually, you touched a few topics. Uh, one technique is persistent events. It's called event sourcing. But it's not good for most systems. Uh, persistence is. Uh, done using a repository pattern. Um, for example, oh, 
we create an invoice and then call repository to save this invoice. And underneath, I can use object relational, ma relational mapper. For example, invoice can be entity in Hibernate or whatever you use. And it just persisted using mapper. Uh, that's in, in, the, in the main application or in infrastructure? Uh, repository interface is uh, part of the domain but implementation is in the infrastructure on t, uh, or in the adapter in this architecture. All source code, you can find sample, but sorry, it's written in Java, Spring, uh, EJB, and in .NET, no Ruby version. You can find it uh, with 40 pages of, of wiki description here on the Google code. Uh, all technical stuff is configured and explained in, in this code. Uh, I can recommend you a new book, Implementing Domain Driven Design by Vernon. Uh, it's one month book where everything is, is uh, presented in uh, maybe Ruby also. I can't remember. Okay. And last question? Yeah. For which Okay, event sourcing, I will explain what is it. Event sourcing is a technique when you store events that happened on the aggregate, sequence of events, not relational, relational model of the uh, aggregate. So you have, you have a sequence, I added product to the order, added, added, removed, added, confirmed, and so on. So event sourcing can allow you to ask different questions about data. For example, how my aggregate looked in this point of time and in this point of time, because I want to compare. So you can uh, rewind events f uh, to the given point in time. And second, second thing is you can um, ask different, if different questions from which point of time this order does not con contain this item, for example. So you can ask different questions if you need to ask them. For example, if you build a um, trading machine or something. <laughs> but, but by default, don't use it in a business application. You don't need it. All right. Thanks a lot for coming. Thanks. Thanks.